2015, it's over £700 million. Back in 1993, it was just over £400 million. So, okay, the population's increased, so you would expect more cost. But actually, per head of population, it now costs around about £7,000 per person to run the island. It used to be 5000 This is the main problem for the island. It's the main problem that we're going to have to focus on for the next 20, 30 years. How we reverse the trend and how we make the island more efficient and more affordable. The industry needs to recognise it needs to play a part in that. Coming to government and asking for more funds is not going to be achievable, in my opinion. So we need to think of a different way. Here's some figures, and this isn't a full economic model, so my apologies, but it just gives an illustration of perhaps thinking slightly differently about things. It's a balance of payments specific to the Jersey Royal industry, with government on one side providing and actually taking away with the other. So the single area payment for potatoes for 2015 equates on the 17,000 some of Virgies ever grown, just over 480,000 pounds. There was an advertising PR budget contribution specific to the Jersey Wall of 20,000 pounds. Input by the government, just over half a million pounds. At the same time, however, growers are paying harbour dues on exports. Harbour dues that actually don't exist in Europe, or if you're a producer in Cornwall or Brittany, 300,000 pound a year. Eight pounds something for the 30,000 tons of potatoes that were exported. There's tax on land rates, land rents that government collects. Land rents, we know that from the official statistics, 71% of potato lot farm farming land is rented. We put in an average rent. 20% of that revenue is paid to tax in tax to government. There's emissions duty paid on new tractors, and there's rates paid on the land, which again aren't paid in Europe. Um, so all that adds up to just over 650, nearly £660,000 per year. Now our point here is, government's actually making a profit from the industry. So what we need to consider is, this expenditure is actually an investment. <coughs> and as an investment, we need to look at ways of making that investment work. And again, to my view, and this may be controversial, but I'll put it out there because this is about creating debate and conversation. But a single area payment that is a payment made by government to growers because last year they grew potatoes, or a number of months ago they grew potatoes, is not forward thinking. It's not investing in their future, and it's not even allowing them to compete on this level playing field that they seem to want to compete on. So we need to recognise that. Wouldn't it be better if that money was spent, if that was reversed, if it was spent on advertising and PR? Then you're putting something positive that's going to bring rewards in the longer term, which is really what the industry needs, long-term thinking. <coughs> but some people will be saying, well, of course, the Jersey Wall's been here 125 years, it's going to continue because it's an iconic brand and it's all great, fine. There's some warnings, however. It is the only outdoor crop that we have left in any quantity. This graph shows the returns per Vergy since 1972 again adjusted for inflation. And there's a trend line on the graph. And it's not a very healthy trend line. In the last 15 years, the amount of growers involved in the industry has decreased from 200 to about 20. Now that's achieved certain efficiencies in production, which is fine. From my perspective, I actually can't see that process continuing much further. In other words, we cannot become much more efficient than we already are. So the industry has a very real challenge as to where it looks to next, to either bring more revenue in from the marketplace or to reduce costs. Or perhaps the island should be looking at alternatives. So to summarise, and really this last slide is to throw some ideas out there, and perhaps this is a starting point for the new rural economy strategy and the new way of keeping Jersey farming. The fundamental thing is that we need policy which is based on economic reality, not on wishful thinking. The local market certainly has a part to play and the excellent work done by Genuine Jersey is a leading light in showing what is possible. Because if there are new things out there, it's not going to start off on a huge scale, 
it is going to be small artisan producers who come up with an idea, who can be encouraged, nurtured, and that idea then can grow into something which will in the longer term offer opportunities for all those engaged in the rural economy. So we can look at new crops, quality assured crops, safe food. Work, more work can be done on exports. The dairy have already done excellent work in moving their product to different parts of the world which has not before been considered. Can't we do the same with the Jersey Royal? The aquaculture sector, something that I've been personally involved with for the last five years or so, has tremendous potential. We have a fantastic natural resource in the seas that surround us. We have access to that. We've got one of the largest tidal ranges in the world. Much more can be done to encourage that sector to develop. There's opportunity with processed, and that should actually be prepared foods. Taking some trips to the UK this year and looking at what's going on in the marketplace, in fact, the only growth sector in the potato business at the moment is potatoes that are ready to eat. We've already heard this morning about housewives who have less time to be preparing their food. But on the island at the moment, we don't seem to have uh, challenged or got into that market. And that will help us to add value. And marketing initiatives, getting the message out there, getting the message out locally, but also getting the message out in our marketplace. Thank you very much for listening.